Hey guys, how is everybody doing? Continuing off my Christopher Nolan review series. Sorry that this one is very late. Life got ahead of me, and I did not have time to watch the next three Christopher Nolan movies before Oppenheimer. I checked out Oppenheimer last night. But, since I'm very late, I'm still going to give you my thoughts on Interstellar, Dunkirk, and, and Tenet, and then we're going to close off all of this with my personal ranking of all 12 Christopher Nolan movies, but I still have three more movies to review, and here are my thoughts on Interstellar. One of my positives on Interstellar is the way how it captures emotion. This movie is fucking emotional, and that's the, kind of in a good way, and it's like, Jesus Christ, stop making me cry every five minutes of what's going on in this movie. Now, I'll get more into it later, but this movie's really emotional, where it's about, like, a man, he has to go to, he has to do the suicide mission where he has to go to space, and he has to basically do a bunch of stuff to save humanity, where I will get to soon, but he also has to do the thing where he has to abandon his, ch his two children just to save the rest of humanity, where this mission could take years, decades. It could it can be to where his kids might be dead. And the entire movie, it where when they do this mission, they do this and that and all this crazy shit, to where there's one mission where one hour there is seven years in the real world. And once they were done there, he goes back and there's like 20 to 30 years worth of footage of his kids sending him messages and telling him what's been going on in his in their lives where his son is graduating high school, he found the perfect girl, he just graduated college and he and, and he did in fact have a child. And to where Matthew McConaughey's performance, just in that one scene where he's just standing, uh, sitting there smiling, but he's also crying because he's relieved that his son moved on and had his own life. But at the same time, he's upset because he wasn't there for him or to help him out the entire time. His grandfather, played by John Lithgow, had to do, uh, had to raise him himself. Like that whole scene is just sitting there. He's so happy. He's proud of him. But he's devastated that he wasn't there for his own son. And let me tell you, you will not know how long I cried during that scene. I literally got emotional. Like, I was like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck, man? Like, it's that... I'm actually crying right now. It's that... It's that sad where he has to watch his own son grow up and he didn't get to see him. It's sad. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm actually crying. I'm sorry for this. It, it's a devastating scene, and the fact that Matthew McConaughey was actually crying, and he even said to him uh, in interviews that that um, he was thinking about what if he had to do this with his own children. That whole performance was where he was thinking, this is my child, basically. And then he gets to the part where his daughter finally sends him a message where she hasn't talked to him, uh, sent him a message throughout the entire movie, and then she finally sends him one and saying, "Is like, you remember when you left and you jokingly said, by the time you come back, I might be your age? She was his age in that video. He's been gone that long to where he she's in her 30s now, and he technically should be in, like, his 60s. That's a very devastating moment. It's... One of the best scenes in the entire movie. This movie is very emotional. As you can see, I'm crying right now. It's a very emotional movie. And a lot of people actually criticized uh, Christopher Nolan for being an emotionless director. Saying that he has no emotion in his movies. If you want to cry and be wa and watch a movie that you absolutely like. If you want to cry and watch a movie directed by one of the best directors out there. This movie's for you. I like the cast of this movie, where Christopher Nolan always has a great cast. You got Michael, um, Jesus, Michael McConaughey, Ma Michael McConaughey, Matthew McConaughey. You got Jessica Chastain, Annie Hathaway, Michael Caine, John Lithgow. Hell, you even got Matt Damon for a moment here. This cast is awesome. I love the overall cast. They all pull off very pretty. They all pull it off pretty good. There is one casting that I will get into later. 
But to me, this entire cast is great, especially Michael Caine. He's always great in every Christopher Nolan movies. He's also just a great actor. And I just found out he's in his 90s. Good job, dude. Um, I love this cast. Uh, every time Christopher Nolan does a movie, his cast always pulls off what they're supposed to do. The cast is always great. But Matthew McConaughey is just great in this movie. I love this entire cast. To me, the standout was probably John Lithgow. I know John Lithgow most from the Trinity Killer from the Dexter series, which I've finally been actually binge watching. I took like a, like two months off the first season and then I went back and I was like, this show is fucking awesome. I love this cast. It's great. They all do their part. It's, what else do you want me to say? I've said this before in like almost every other Christopher Nolan movie. Cast is awesome. Really love the story here. I talked about it a little bit earlier, but the story of this movie is where you get my, uh, Ma uh, Matthew McConaughey. I keep thinking Michael McConaughey. I don't know why. That's not a person. Matthew McConaughey's character where he's like a, basically a genius. He's like an astronaut. He's like a, a construction worker or something. I forget what they say in this movie. Um, he's basically a tech whiz, he's, like, a genius about, like, space and everything, and then one night, his daughter and him, at, where they find out about, like, a secret NASA base, and then they go to that place, and they get caught, and then Michael Caine's character volunteers for him to go to space and do this suicide mission, and like I said before, this mission could take years, decades, centuries, all we know, like I said, one uh, one hour in this place is seven years in the real world, like on back on Earth, which is like the black hole thing going on. It's a it's a great story, and like I said, it's a very emotional story where this man has to choose: does he choose to abandon his family to uh, like save all of humanity, or the other one where he doesn't do this mission and he puts all of humanity. Uh, at danger, he has, to, and he chooses to save all of humanity, but he has to abandon his family, which is a, it's a very emotional, like I already said. Hell, I watched this movie with my dad, and after the movie's over, I was like, so, uh, what'd you think? And he, and, and, and I quote, <clears throat> where are my glasses? I need to read this card. One sec. And I quote, <clears throat> fuck humanity. I really love the visuals of this movie. I believe it actually won the Oscar that year for best reasons. This movie is fucking beautiful where it goes to like the whole space thing where even like people when this movie first was announced that he was going to do like a 2001 Space Odyssey movie and that was going to be in space and it's Christopher Nolan. People are like, oh, if it's Christopher Nolan doing like a 2001 Space Odyssey movie, it's going to be beautiful. Like, to me, the standout is when they, like, first go through the black hole and, like, all the stars and you see, like, a, all the planets and all that. It's like, holy shit. I would have loved to watch this movie in 3D. I usually don't watch 3D movies. I feel they're pointless. But this movie in 3D would have been awesome. It would have been watching, it would have been better watching Avatar The Way of Water in 3D. I didn't watch that in 3D. It's three hours long. Why Why would I wear 3D glasses and then damage my eyes? Huh. Anyways, especially like that whole landscape scene where they're out in the water and they're trying to do all this mission. And then, which is a very cool segment, is when they look like right behind them and they're like, it's mountains. And then Matthew McConaughey, he just goes, those aren't mountains. And it's just like a huge fucking wave just coming right down them. Like they're standing right on water. But the water's just, like, going up, and it's slowly coming down. And apparently it does that, like, every, like, seven years, basically, or something like that. Like, in the real world, it's every seven years. But in this world, it's every one hour. That's a very cool segment. Especially, like, that whole iceberg, like, snow-like village and all that. Like, that whole snow section. It's like, what is going on here? Like, <laughs> it's beautiful. Like, how do you not love that? Like... I will not question why it won Oscar that year for Best Visuals. It still baffles me today that movie companies can't do visual like this. See, this this is why Christopher Nolan's one of the best directors out there. Even recent interviews, he basically said that CGI is horrible. Enough performances uh, in my last positive. It's now, 
I'm not saying any of the other performances were basically dog shit or horrible, but to me, Matthew McConaughey's performance in this movie was the best. It was absolutely amazing, especially that whole scene where he's driving away from his family going to go on this mission and he's slowly crying like he's breaking down in tears that he's leaving his daughter and his family like that whole scene basically this was the time when matthew mcconaughey was like on top of the mountain where almost every movie he was in it was just like a masterpiece i don't understand why that year he didn't win the oscar for this movie he won an oscar in 2014 for a different movie i forget what the fucking movie was he should have won the oscar for this fucking movie I'm, I don't even care what the other movie was. He should have won it for this one. He should have won it for this movie. His performance in this movie was fucking outstanding. He was amazing in this movie. Where you felt his emotion. You felt his happiness. You felt his sadness. You felt all of his emotions through this movie. And usually a lot of movies can't do that. Where the performance is so great, you don't really, like, yeah, sure, there's great performances out there, but you don't feel anything, usually. But this movie, you feel his emotion. That's how great Matthew McConaughey's performance in this movie is. That's how you can tell he's a great actor. But yet again, I every time I think of Matthew McConaughey, I think of Vilmer from The Next Generation. That movie was fucking weird. Now moving on to my mixed aspects, and I only have two. And my first mixed aspect is the characters. I don't think any of the characters are horrible or underwritten. I do think that some of them are interesting, but to me, some of these characters don't even, I don't care for. The only characters that I liked was Matthew McConaughey's characters and his family. Those were the only characters that I actually liked and I actually cared for. All the other characters were just kind of there. Like, they weren't very underwritten, they were kind of underwritten, but they were just like, oh, yeah, who are you again? There's literally, like, two people on the ship with Matthew McConaughey and, Han and Anna Hathaway's character, where there's, like, this one guy that's, like, a tech nerd, basically, but he dies, and then you got this black guy, I don't remember his name, he dies too. The fuck was their point? To die? And they got Matthew, Matthew, what? Matt Damon's character, who was just also there. He died. What the fuck happened? Mixed, mixed aspect is involving Matt Damon, and that's his, and that's like his whole, like, side plot thing to where you find out that, um, these characters kind of went to save him so they can get this mission done and all that, but then you find out that this mission is basically impossible. They can't win. There, There's no way to get back home during this mission. And he betrays Matthew McConaughey and leaves him to die, and then he says that there's no way to do it, and then he dies. That kind of like just came out of nowhere, and I honestly feel if you took that whole section out of the movie... This movie might be like 2 hours and 20 minutes long. But it said it's 2 hours and 50 minutes long. I feel if you took that out, it would have no difference to the movie. But I understand why it's in there, but I could have lived without it. Like, I honestly feel if they took it out, I wouldn't care. I don't care for that side plot. I don't care what the fuck is going on. But I feel it's only there for filler. That's the only reason I feel that it's there, but it has some aspects that I enjoy, especially the scene where Matt Damon decides to betray Matthew McConaughey and, like, the whole twist, like, you can't win this mission and all that. Those are the only things about that whole side plot that is in that's interesting, but other than that, it doesn't need to be there. It's really only there for filler to be almost three hours long. Well, guys... A very good movie, a very emotional movie, a very great sci-fi movie, great performances, especially from Matthew McConaughey. This is a movie where I would recommend, especially if you're a sci-fi fan and all that, this movie is for you. So this is a movie where I would, in fact, recommend that you go out and buy it. What do you guys think about Interstellar? Have you seen this movie, and what did you think about it? Did you not like it? Did you like it? Let me know in the comments below, and we will talk about it. And if you like this video, like it. If you love it, subscribe, and hit the bell notifications, and so you will get notified for my latest videos. But again, until my next video, see you next time.